Hello everyone. Welcome to Learning Literature with Purva. In today's video, we are going to discuss the longest poem of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. We are going to look at the detailed summary of the poem and then we are going to critically analyze it. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Now the rhyme of the ancient mariner was one of the poems that Coleridge contributed in the lyrical ballads. So the lyrical ballads is an anthology of poems published by Wordsworth and Coleridge. Now Wordsworth wrote most of the poems whereas Coleridge contributed four of his poems to the lyrical ballads. The first edition of Lyrical Ballads was published in 1798 and it started the Romantic Age. The other three poems of Coleridge that were published in the Lyrical Ballads are The Foster Mother's Tale, The Nightingale and The Dungeon. So now let's take a look at the detailed summary of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. The poem begins with an old sailor, the mariner, who stops a wedding guest on his way to the wedding ceremony. Now the reason the sailor stops the wedding guest is because he wants to tell a story to the wedding guest. Now at first, the wedding guest is very annoyed because he wants to go to the wedding ceremony. But when he looks at the captivating eyes of the mariner, he becomes intrigued. He wants to know the story that the mariner wants to tell him. So the mariner starts beginning his story. So it is about a sailing voyage that the mariner took many years ago. So at first everything goes great with the ship. There is great fortune. But then the ship is driven south by a storm. And then it is, finally it gets stuck in the icy waters of the Antarctic. Now during that time, a huge bird called the albatross somehow appears from somewhere and helps the ship get out of the ice jam. Now all the members of the ship, the crew members are very happy with the bird. So the albatross is fed and praised by the crew members. But the mariner shoots the bird. There is no reason for doing so. The reason he does is because he does not value the life of other living creatures. So therefore, despite getting so much help from the albatross, he shoots the bird. The crew members are angry with the mariner for killing the bird, but they soon forget it. And they are happy because the weather has cleared and there is no problem. But soon the crew members realize that they did a crime by supporting the horrible thing that the mariner did by killing the bird. Therefore, the sea spirits are angry with them. The south wind now sends the ship into uncharted territory near the equator where the ship is becalmed. That means the ship does not move at all. And during that time, we have this famous lines, water, water everywhere and all the boats did shrink, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. So the crew members are thirsty and hungry because the ship is not moving. And they completely blame the mariner, they curse the mariner for their sad condition. So they make the mariner wear the dead albatross, the dead bird, around his neck so that he can remember the burden he is carrying by killing the innocent bird. After a long, tiresome time, they see a ghostly ship approaching them. On board are death, a skeleton, and nightmare, life and death, a deathly pale woman. Death and nightmare are playing dice 
for the lives of the crew members. With the roll of the dice, death wins the life of all the crew members and nightmare, life and death, wins the life of the mariner, a prize she considers more valuable. Life and death, the name itself, is an indication of the mariner's fate. That means he will suffer a fate worse than death. So slowly, one by one, all the crew members start dying. But the mariner lives on. Seven days and nights pass and the mariner is surrounded by the dead bodies of all the crew members and he can see the curse in their eyes. The mariner's curse slowly starts getting lifted when he starts appreciating the sea creatures. Earlier, he used to look down upon other living creatures. But now he respects them, he admires the sea creatures and he also prays for them. So when he is saying a sincere prayer, the dead bird falls from his neck and his guilt is partially gone. Then it starts raining and the crew members, the dead crew members are possessed by good spirits and the good spirits start sailing the ship. And in a trance-like state, the mariner realizes that the ship is being powered supernaturally. When he opens his eyes, he sees that he has reached his homeland. A hermit on the mainland finds the ship and pulls the mariner. Then the mariner tells his story to the hermit. The mariner realizes what a bad thing he had done by killing the albatross and he wants to tell everyone his story so that no one does the same mistake that he did. He has understood that it is important for human beings to respect every other living creature. As penance for shooting the albatross, the mariner tells his story again and again to the people he meet because he's trying to teach a lesson in his story. He prayed best, who loveth best, all things, great and small, because the dear God who loveth us, he made and loveth all. Every living creature is God's creation. Therefore, the best way to honor God is by respecting every other living being. So the marina leaves and the wedding guest returns to his home and the next day the wedding guest wakes up as a wiser man. So now that we have looked at the detailed summary of the rhyme of the ancient marina, now we will look at the critical analysis of this beautiful poem. The poem shows that human beings must respect every aspect of nature. When the mariner kills the albatross, it is similar to controlling nature. It shows how human beings sometimes try to control nature. But nature is very powerful. The poem shows nature as all-powerful, terrifying and awe-inspiring. Nature is way more powerful than human beings. Therefore, human beings can never control nature. And that is evident in the poem when we see that suddenly the ship enters uncharted territory and it is becalmed. It does not move. And the crew members and the mariner, they almost die of thirst. The poem also shows the relationship between nature and God or nature and the spiritual world. Any insult to nature is also an insult to God or the spiritual world. God has created nature. Therefore, when human beings try to control nature the way the mariner tried to do so by killing the albatross, the mariner is not insulting nature, but he is also insulting 
the almighty he is also insulting the spiritual world harming nature then becomes a moral failure and a sin such sins lead to punishment and the punishment comes as a combination of the natural and the spiritual that is the supernatural in the poem the supernatural punishment is shown through death and life in death or nightmare death takes the life of all the crew members whereas life and death nightmare subjects the mariner to eternal suffering it is only when the mariner starts appreciating the sea creatures that his punishment becomes easier the poem tries to show that human beings must respect and appreciate nature because according to the romantics valuing nature is a spiritual necessity the romantic poets valued emotion over reason and they glorified and appreciated nature so that's it for today's video where we discussed this beautiful poem of the romantic age the rhyme of the ancient mariner by samuel taylor coleridge I hope you found the video helpful. If you found the video helpful, then do like it and share with your friends. I'll be back soon with a video on a literary work. Till then, stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purba. Also stay connected on Facebook and Instagram. Do visit our online academy www.learningliteraturewithpurba.com to discover a wide range of courses. on english literature and creative writing thank you so much for watching